Paige leaves a note in my letterbox on the last day of finals. I see it waiting for me out of the corner of my eye and while passing through the NBA student lounge. There's a group of us meeting at Molly's each Thursday night during the Christmas break, it reads. Just a way to keep up good relations. You should come. I'm inviting you. Also, why don't you list your phone number or email address in the student directory? And for that matter, why aren't you on Facebook? Are you a spy or something? Call me. She includes her phone number at the bottom with the postscript. My family and I are members at Southern Yacht Club. We've had a Catalina 36 since I was a little girl. So if you feel like setting foot on an actual sailboat sometime... I fold the note five times and tuck it into the back of my wallet. On my streetcar ride home, bouncing along the St. Charles Avenue tracks, I imagine the sailboat Paige's family keeps at the yacht club. In pristine condition, I'll bet. Not like the wreck I saw this morning in the West End Boneyard up on blocks, and such a mess that the old harbormaster could hardly muster a nice word to say about it despite his obvious desire to see it gone. Well, it would be a real project was about the best he could say for the battered hole with sentimental journey stenciled across its stern. But then, you're a young guy, right? No wife, no kids. Gonna take on a project like this? Now'd be the time. I ran my hand along the pitted gel coat. How did these abrasions get here? Surge ripped all the boats off their moorings in the municipal harbor, carried them across the street, and left them piled up in the parking lot when the water receded. This gal was lying on her port side at the bottom of the pile. Owner never came back for her. After mentally stumbling through a selection of half-remembered nautical terms for an intelligent question to ask, I settled on, Did you manage to save in a standing rigging? He laughed. <laughs> you're joking, right? All that's left was what you're looking at, but you'd want to start over with the rigging anyway, gut the interior too, and rebuild from an empty hole. That's one thing about these old bolts. The holes are thick. They take a beating, and you can always rebuild. My flatmates come screaming and chanting around the corner, waving flags and stomping feet. I hold Huck Finn into my back pocket and step into the middle of the sidewalk where they will notice me. It seems they have waited for the other university kids to pass in order to sweep up all the pretty girls who have fallen away from the protest for fear of the police. It is a fine strategy. My flatmates comfort these girls and offer protection, telling them to meet at this building on the corner if anything goes wrong. We live here together in a spacious flat, they say. Follow us back here for safety. They see me and call out. Our friend, they say. He is Iraqi and has seen much worse than this. And look, he is not afraid. Come with us, friend. I join with them, but only so my flatmates are not embarrassed. They would not forgive me if I stayed away. We are pushed closer together by the growing mass of people, my flatmates and I, closer and closer together with these pretty girls. The crowd becomes louder and more serious in their chanting as we are pulled forward into the smell of riot gas and gunpowder. We march closer to the main square. Smoke drifts through the abandoned cars ahead of us, the overturned carts. Our Iraqi friend speaks perfect English, my flatmates tell the pretty girls. He can talk to the Western journalists, should we find any. You girls are too pretty to not go on television. He will find a reporter and speak in English for us. You girls will stand behind him and smile for the camera. This is the best way to fight Ben Ali. We will show the world what pretty girls we have in Tunisia. A few of the girls laugh, but most of them frown at this foolishness. They are smarter than my flatmates and seem to know better what awaits us in the square. A pretty girl asks me if I fought the Americans before I left Iraq. I tell her that I did not, that I am a coward, you see. You speak English, she says. Did you speak English for them instead of fighting? Sometimes, but most of the time just for myself, for business. She turns away, disappointed. Instantly, I find myself wishing I had told her a lie. Still, I do not blame this pretty girl for her disgust in me. I have disappointed many others before you, I think to myself. <laughs>